let's begin inside the box with Ghost in the Shell. So this is the first movie, one of the older releases. It, it got re-released to slash updated a bit in Ghost in the Shell 2.0. They added some CGI here and there. Maybe they touched up the video a bit. I'm not sure. And I know there's been multiple releases of Ghost in the Shell 2 Innocence. This one has these annoying locks on them. I should probably snap those off. But then they'll be snapped off. Uh, dilemmas. Um, we've got the first TV series, Standalone Complex. And I have to say, there are the thing I remember the most from the TV series is the Tachikomas. For those of you who don't know much about Ghost in the Shell, the TV series, the Tachikomas are basically these... Um, spider tank robot things there. They develop their own personality as the series progress. Become very interesting. That's not to say that the rest of the series wasn't interesting, it's just that the Tachikomas left me with more of an impression than everything else. Because like, I don't know, it, it seems like some maybe somewhat stereotypical um, stories to revolve around and then it all kind of wraps together. It's all about the Laughing Man incident and so the OVA version summarizing all of it would be um, this uh, movie OVA thing, The Laughing Man, which I need to have in order to have a complete collection. Um, now, standalone, uh, Ghost in the Shell standalone complex second gig. For the first two volumes, I actually have these Steel tins. They have a second disc in them with a different audio stream. I'm not quite sure how much I care about those. There were a couple more things about this one that I remembered versus the other. I wonder if a lot of that is just um, how near each other they are, or if it's because after watching the first season, you kind of get an idea for what little incident is important and what exactly a standalone complex is supposed to mean, be, or why it's important to the series. I see this disc is loose and it's missing one of those things. So ideally I won't take that one out too much. And uh, naturally, the standalone complex dealt with in that one is related to the individual 11 incident. So that's why there's a movie summarizing all of that. Or maybe it's an OVA. I don't know. This is an OVA. Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex Solid State Society. Which has a sticker on it. Still. And unfortunately it's missing the soundtrack. But I guess I care more about the content than about the bonus features. Because it's got the extras DVD there. So that's an okay compromise. Next up, we have Dejima. Now, technically, I think I was asked to show the second season, but why not show the first season while I'm at it, right? Because the special edition of the first volume came in this nice, thick box. It's not like the DVDs are too... The, the, my only problem with the first season is I don't think it was complete. The second season wasn't complete either and it was it was basically telling the story again from the start this one kind of focused perhaps a little bit too much on the main characters relationships but it wasn't bad it actually felt a lot more like love Hina that way if you consider that a good thing whereas in the second season a lot more emphasis was placed on um making rapid progress through the story I guess Although, I'm assuming that they're both kind of based on the manga. I'm pretty sure that this second one is. This is a summer special that, well actually this is a spring and summer special. As if it didn't need to feel more like Love Hina, right? And I have it in the middle because it looks like the content takes place sometime within the beginning to the middle of the series. Although I could be mistaken. I don't know. Overall, I enjoyed watching all of the Najima stuff. But possibly for different reasons. 
When They Cry is a pretty well-known one. And actually, now I think about it, yeah, these covers are reversible. But that said, I do like keeping the creepy covers on the front. Um, it's a very interesting series that combines um, cute with the horrifying. Although it's not really always my form of humor. A lot, or my form of horror, I mean. I think it's because it's a little too brazen, and I'm really a big fan of the kind of horror that makes your mind go crazy, where it makes you think, oh my god, what if, what if, what if, or something like that. It's not a bad series, and actually uh, yeah, I enjoyed watching it. I remember watching like the 6th DVD while putting together one of these shelves, probably the glass one, or it could have been the black one. Speaking of black... We've got Blackjack, and this is the motion picture, or the movie, um, and then we've got the Black uh, Blackjack OVA, which was released either as these individuals, or as a collection. Either way, um, that's pretty much all the Blackjack that's been released here, and I know it's a pretty famous series, or at least pretty well known. So I guess, well, maybe I'm not too surprised. It's also possible that the original Blackjack is, or the TV series of Blackjack could be a bit aged. I don't know. And last but not least, let's finish inside the box with uh, the request to finish my uh, update from last week. Where basically, I showed the Pokemon movies, and so it was asked for me to show the series. So we begin with... The Season 1 box re-releases. Season 1 being... Well, I guess I don't, I don't want to say longish. I do want to say, get in the fucking box, you stupid DVDs. <sighs> but it was released, re-released in these uh, three box set formats. Which were actually very affordable. And unfortunately, uh, they only stopped the affordable box set releases with the second season. Although I don't know if this was released before or after these. All I know is that this basically means that in order to collect any DVDs or any episodes from the third season, you have to go with the original DVD release, which probably only saw a limited run. And that's why... Some of the most expensive DVDs in my collection came from here. It's because people have to go to these DVDs in order to get Season 3 stuff. Even worse, if you only have a partial collection, the set lets you know. Because it alternates silver and gold. So, when you have them all together... It took me a long time to get that Firepower DVD... When you have them all together, they alternate gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver. This one I paid the most for. Although I did see a cheap copy on Amazon when I checked the other day. So you don't necessarily have to get an expensive copy, but it might be what you have to do if you're going to get it now, right now, before anybody else does. I'll tell you, most of the money spent on it was actually to just... No, I don't have to spend money on it anymore don't have to think about it. I actually have all the DVDs that were released. It looks like they had one more planned after this with two episodes on it, but they never released that as far as I can tell. So, since I mentioned it, there they are. Gold, silver, gold, silver, gold, silver. Can I do this at an angle? It's not easy to hold them that way, but there you go. That's the third season. The fourth season saw this more compact and strange ish release. It's not a bad release. It's strange. I mean, something about this season just feels different. It's like when they made, uh, when they released seasons one and two on the individuals, like, this is what they were doing before they transitioned to box sets because season five master quest 
is in a the similar kind of box set format to the first season with uh, three DVDs inside of it. And it, only two box sets of it were released. As far as I can tell, they may be a little pricey, but they aren't hard to find as far as I've been able to tell. So season six continued on with the three-disc box set release. Season 7, which went back to individual releases again. You know, I really like the puns that a lot of the names, the episode names use. I'm just a pun kind of guy, though. I'd say, I'd blame it on Pokemon if I knew for a fact that it wasn't actually Pokemon's fault. It's actually, I think, the first disc of Season 7 is how far I've gotten. Season 8 was also released as a bunch of individuals. So, unless you specifically know that Advanced Battles is Season 8 and Advanced Challenge is Season 7, it can be pretty damn hard to tell what order these are supposed to be in. I think the Angry Video Game Nerd was recently complaining about the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle stuff giving inconsistent numbering. I mean, this doesn't give inconsistent numbering. At least the seasons have names. But it's still a bit confusing. I think there are just some shows that they have trouble um, basically... Um, releasing in a collector's sort of way. Save for the fact that uh, Season 3 is pretty much a collectible thing on its own. And I'm not the only one who has it, of course. In fact, um, somebody else who follows my channel, whose name I can't remember right now, um, I would me or PM'd me um, a month or two ago that they had actually completed it. So, way to go. That's kind of an accomplishment, because... A lot of them can be kind of hard to find at times. So as you can see, with Season 9, they, um... Ooh. Some neat ones on there. Season 9, they went back to the 3DVD box set thing. And this time in the thin DVD box set form. And then we end with uh, Season 9 Part 2. Now we finish up with the Diamond and Pearl stuff, which they, they've they actually been releasing as individuals, but taking groups of two and selling together. We're actually going to line them up like this instead, and you'll probably see why shortly. I really want to get back into watching it. It's not that it's an exciting series so much as... I'm very curious about um, pretty much how the characters meet together and separate. But while I'm at that, I kind of want to judge the series as well, going through it, seeing what they do. And I know a lot of these, uh, after the first one, since they're, they're mostly, so many of these have simple Pokemon on them. And truth of the matter is, I sometimes I care about the characters more than the Pokemon, because the characters have more p personality, more to really sympathize with. Even in the movies sometimes, although uh, Wobbuffet is probably the funniest thing ever. 
Glaceon's a cool Pokemon. Ambipom. I've um, made a couple people afraid of purple monkeys. Yes, we've got some amusing battle strategies. Now, as you can see, these first six discs are the 10th season. Is that right? 7, 8, 9? Yeah, 10th season. And then these, so these three, these six were the 10th um, and these brighter colored ones have been the 11th. Oh, that's another unfortunate thing about Pokemon is uh, it's all dub only. It's unfortunate, but maybe not unexpected. And as you can see, these DVDs together create an interesting rainbow effect. Now, uh, the series actively being released right now is Season 12. This is the latest to come out. Season, Although the next two discs may actually come out in a um, couple weeks, I think. As you can see, it's... I don't know if it exactly matches since it's a blue. Just like this one here. Which means it skipped purple. But oh well. Anyways, to wrap up the Pokemon stuff, I figured I'd throw in the other couple non-movie things. We've got um, Mewtwo Returns. Which just takes place sometime in the uh, first five seasons. Sometime after the first movie. When uh, Ash and Company run into Mewtwo again. And then we've got uh, P Pikachu's Winter Vacation. Which is just a simple little DVD that contains some of Pikachu's Winter Vacation. I don't think it's all of it though. 